Hi, I'm Mandy and welcome to today's video. A few months ago I made a little Christmas gaming vlog and I had so much fun with it that I decided to make another one. It's spring now and I am very excited about it. The sunny weather makes me feel so nostalgic for Australian Christmas time, playing new video games, and I've just been feeling real happy lately. So I wanted to share with you some of the things I've been up to this season. So in March, I had my first birthday in the US. The day before my birthday, a triangle strategy came out, so I had a lot of fun diving into that. Octopath Traveler is one of my top Switch games, so it was fun seeing something new with that similar art style. And I do love tactical RPGs. For my birthday, I also got Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion on Switch, which is a game that I've been intrigued by for a while now. I thought it sounded like a lot of silly fun, and the artwork is adorable. It's a very short game, but I had a good time with it. There is a lot of silly 2020s humour, which isn't my favourite thing, but there is some other stuff that made me laugh. An important thing to note about this game, though, is that it seems to stutter a lot, which you can see in these clips. It's pretty annoying to play on a bigger screen, but not as noticeable handheld. Rune Factory 5 came out a few weeks after my birthday, but I still consider it a birth month present, if you will. I decided to get the Earthmate edition, and I think it's so beautiful. The art book in particular is just lovely. I've been waiting for this game to come out for years, so it's exciting that it's finally here. It does have some performance issues, which is a bit of a letdown, but it didn't really get in the way of my enjoyment of the game. And some other gifts. My family got me the first two volumes of the Tea Dragon graphic novel series. These are the books that inspired the Tea Dragon Society card game, which is one of my favourites at the moment. They also got me the next volume of my favourite manga, which is Natsume's Book of Friends. And my birthday itself was fun. We had dinner at a little Australian themed restaurant, which was nice because I've been missing home a lot lately. We also went to our favourite game store and found a cheap copy of Shenmue 2 on Xbox, which I didn't have yet. Pal Regions actually got it on Dreamcast, so that's where I played it. If you know me, you'll probably know that Shenmue is one of my favourite series of all time. It's such an iconic story, full of classic Dreamcast fun and beautiful music. So let's chat about some of the other games I've been playing lately. Earlier this year, Earthbound was added to the Nintendo Switch Online service, so I decided it was the perfect opportunity to finally play it. Earthbound is one of those ones that I've been wanting to dive into for the longest time, because I know that so many people love it. And it didn't disappoint. It's such a classic RPG experience that at the same time is so atypical. It's quirky, and memorable, and good old fun. Another one that has spent years on my backlog is Never 7. This is the first game in the Infinity series, written by Kotaro Uchikoshi, who later wrote the Zero Escape series, which, as I've probably mentioned in almost every video at this point, is my favourite story of all time. Years ago I played Ever 17, which is the game that comes after this, and I loved it so much. So it's been really nostalgic and fun getting into Never 7 after all this time. Never 7 is about a group of uni students who are staying in a cabin together as a sort of bonding exercise, and on the first night the main character has a nightmare, or perhaps premonition, that someone among them is going to die. So there's this overarching plotline that has quite an eerie tone to it, but the game is filled with a lot of typical dating sim moments in between. I'd say the atmosphere overall is a lot less intense than Ever 17, where you're trapped in an underwater theme park, or 999, where you're trapped on a sinking ship. I prefer those sorts of stories a lot more, but it was still cool to experience the place where it all began. The next game I have to talk about is Crisis Core, and I've had such a special time with it. My PSP is definitely the handheld that gets the least amount of love, which isn't because I don't enjoy it, but I guess I've just always been more focused on other things, 
I was more of a DS person as a child. So spending some quality time with my PSP has been lovely, but also I am in love with Crisis Core. I feel bad that it's taken me so long to get around to it, but at the same time, I feel like those games that speak to my heart always seem to enter my life at just the right time. Final Fantasy VII is my favourite Final Fantasy, and being able to play through Zack's side of the story has been such an awesome experience. The cool thing about it is that, as a prequel, you know where the story is ultimately going to end up, but having this new perspective to see it through is really special. And on top of all these games, as usual, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV. So I play with my husband and our best friend, and we finally beat Stormblood. A highlight for me was definitely the Lakshmi trial. I'd been eagerly waiting for it for about a year, ever since I got the blissful Kamui mount and heard the song for the first time. So yeah, that was a very exciting moment for me. So I also decided to make an alt. I wanted to scope out the new Materia data center because, I mean, as an Australian, it's very exciting. Even though I live in the US now, so I don't personally need an Australian server, but still, I feel very seen. The other cool thing is that the housing districts here are filled with empty plots because the server is so dead. So, I couldn't resist getting a house. And look, my main doesn't have a private estate, and will probably never get a private estate, so I think that's okay, right? But also, there's no competition over here, so I guess I don't have to feel bad about it. I went for a little cottage in the lavender beds. It's not much at the moment, because we're really starting from scratch here, but it's home. Oh, and while we're talking about 14, I recently started reading Final Fantasy Lost Stranger, and I've been enjoying it a lot. It's about a Square Enix employee that ends up getting sucked into a fantasy world that is basically Final Fantasy XIV, but isn't quite the same. Familiar things have different names, and there are different rules about magic and the way the world works. It's got a lot of fun references to XIV and Final Fantasy lore in general. It's a lot of adventure and fun, but it also has a bit of a serious underlying plotline which is revealed at the end of the first chapter. I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Before I sign off, I want to talk about a few of the other games I've picked up recently. The first one, which I am incredibly excited about, is the Shenmue 3 Complete Collector's Edition from Limited Run Games. This is a special version that includes all the DLC on the disc, and comes with a bunch of cool replica items from the game. Shenmue 3 is such a special game. When you play it, it feels like no time has passed since Shenmue 2, and some people don't like that, but I think there's something magical about it. Uh, if you didn't know, there was an 18 or so year gap between 2 and 3, and I won't get into the whole thing right now, but it's one of those sweet stories of a lost series coming back to life with the help of a determined creator and a dedicated fanbase. It was a really cool thing to see. I was really excited to find Brave Story for the PSP at one of our local game stores. It's an RPG that I've heard some really good things about, and I've been wanting to play my PSP more, so it works out perfectly. Like I said, my PSP library is tiny, so I'm really happy I stumbled upon something that I've had my eye out for for a few years now. I also picked up Planetarian for the PSP. This is a Japanese import. I don't believe any version of it was ever released physically in English, but there is an English version available on Steam, which I played when I was younger. Planetarian is a really short, kinetic novel? I think that's the technical name? Think visual novel, but you don't make any choices, you just read it through. I liked it a lot. 
It's set in this post-apocalyptic world where you play as a scavenger who stumbles upon this old planetarium that is all but deserted, save for a single android who has been continuing to work there, completely oblivious to the state of the world. It also has a beautiful soundtrack. There's this one song called Gentle Jenna, which to this day always comes to mind whenever there's a particularly rainy day outside. So that is my wrap up of some of the fun things I've been up to in spring. I guess I'll be back to update you on what I get up to in summer, but for now I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you next time. Yes, found you. Yes, there you are. Bailuchan found. Oh wow, that's a Bailuchan too? Wow, sneaky. Yes, gotcha. Hello, Bailu-chan. Aha! Found you, Bailu-chan. <laughs>